In this video, I will talk you through the basic UI setup using add-ons, dominoes, and weak auras. Stick around. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Gyro here. Today we're taking a break from running horrific visions or discussing class uh, specifics, uh, publishing class guides, and are talking about something that makes all of this tick. I'm talking about your UI or user interface or mainly add-ons because standard user interface, I'm not even bothering to show it to you. You probably have seen it or remember seeing it at least once or twice in your WoW uh, life when you just installed the game. So um, standard UI is age old. It's an ancient game. It was released in 2004 and I was there when the game released. I was playing on and off, but I was never taking more than three to four months breaks. So I am a WoW veteran. My UI, however, does not necessarily impress you with some sort of flashiness or using the latest, most up-to-date add-ons and for every single occasion and stuff like that. I'm reusing parts of standard UI and I'm using what I find um, to be the least intrusive and most basic, most straightforward to use action bars add-on, which is called Dominoes. So I will introduce Dominoes primarily in this video. You can treat this as a mini guide. It probably will not be extensive, but it certainly will tell you everything you need to know. And I'll show you everything I use it for. You can dig deeper, you can explore, you can play with the settings, but I think from everything that I have planned to show to you, it's an unscripted guide, but I have a bit of a plan of what I'm going to show you. I think you will get everything that you need to know. So start taking notes or just make yourselves comfortable and let's get on with it. So Domino's add-on gets um, you Google for it. If you never heard of it or if you heard of it but don't know where to get it, you Google for it and then you click the link and it takes you to CurseForge where we get all of our add-ons from these days. As I spoke to you in the other video where I talked to you about Azeroth Autopilot add-on, I personally do not use Twitch client to install and manage my add-ons because I don't want any extra what I find to be intrusive software on my machine. I do not want anything to be managed for me. I can manage everything myself. I'm not saying you have to be this way, but this is the way I do it. So because this is the way I do it, the way I recommend you get the add-on is to not just install Twitch client, log in, share your details, all of that, but instead you just download you press download link uh, button and you get the zip archive. The, yeah, you double click on it, you open it as a folder, you find your installation folder of World of Warcraft, retail, interface, add-ons, open it and you drag and drop it there. It's best done when the game is not running so that the game gets a chance to refresh the add-ons when you boot it up. Yeah, next time when you get into it, and it will show it to you, it will load up all these new bars, which probably will not look as neat as this. They will look all bunched up here in the middle of the screen, somewhere in this middle area. Um, but I will show you how to configure them, how to move them around and what to do with them. It will take you a few minutes. It, you will probably continue playing with them. You will probably decide how many actually action bars do you use? How many action bars, how many buttons do you actually want to see? and how much stuff you don't care about and you just want to keep it clear. Domino's is beautiful in terms of it's very small, it's not a huge add-on, it doesn't like... I just don't find it so intrusive basically as I already said. That's why I highly recommend Domino's. I've been a big fan for many years. The only, before we go into configuration, the only difficulty with when you manually choose to manage add-ons and don't let some sort of extra Twitch client manage your add-ons is that whenever a new patch is, is released of the game, which let's be fair, is not happening very often, but when the new patch is released or expansion, like that's, that's most obvious, like with expansions, you don't have much of a choice. But when that happens, you kind of have to um, manually then go back to CurseForge, see if the new add-on version is released, copy again the zip archive and override the files if there is a new version released. That's the only issue. But um, at the same time, in the standard interface, in the standard UI, when you go to add-ons in World of Warcraft, when you just log in into the game, you press button add-ons, it shows you the list of add-ons there on the same screen where you select your character. 
Um, and on that screen uh, of add-ons, there is a tick box that you can tick at the top of the add-ons list to say load out of date add-ons. It is done just for the purposes of um, just for the purposes of making sure that um, if the add-on creator has not yet had a chance to update the add-on right on the first day of new patch being released, then your add-on likely will still be working, unless we are talking about moving from Battle for Azeroth to Shadowlands, unless something major changed. But if it is patch 8.25 um, changes to patch 8.3, majority of my add-ons still continued running. I don't think that I've updated Domino specifically for like two, three patches. That is, that is the honest truth. So it's still working. There are no issues with it. Now, with that being said, let's get on with it. So uh, Domino's, once it's installed, you will see that there is a, this little white icon on the minimap. See this one at the top here? I'm moving it right now. So that's Domino's add-on. There are other ways to get to it, but the easiest way is to just click on that icon and you will see the add-on in configuration mode. Configuration mode. Once again, when you first look at it, the, all the bars and everything are going to be in a different place. When the add-on is loaded for the very first time, uh, if I recall correctly, and right now it's hard for me to reset back to that, back to the future, um, the bars will look like this, like the, like the module that I'm dragging on the screen right now. These are all individual bars and they're all numbered action bars. So they have rubber banding effect. So if you put one, if you put the bottom one to the top one, they kind of band together and they have this glue effect and you can move them as a, as a group. So that's a little bit of a kind of little trick for you, not particularly handy, but you know, if you reconfigure your add-on a lot, or if you have a lot of alts and you would like to configure dominoes for your various alts, this becomes handy. So this rubber banding allows you to separate or move or put this put these bars together. So by default, uh, by default, all of the, if you right click, so right now I right clicked on the, on the bar number 10, by default, the length of the bar, the size of the bar is 12. It means that 12 icons fit on it. Uh, so the size is 12 means total size of however many things fit on, fit on it. And the columns are also 12. So you have it's a skinny little horizontal add-on. There are obviously 12 places, there are 12 columns and 12 icons, 12 actions, 12 spells, 12 abilities would fit on it, yeah? So as you can see, it's very, very self-explanatory. I even feel a bit silly explaining this to you guys, but I suppose someone has to show it to you for the first time. First of all, when you are looking at configuration of the add-on, if you, I use middle mouse click, so you know the mouse wheel, so like a third button on the mouse, but it's a, it's a middle click, yeah? If you middle click on the, on the bar, it actually becomes visible in the game. Right now it's configuration mode, right now don't worry about it. But you can see it became kind of bluish. So bluish stuff is visible on the screen. But you can tell the add-on what you don't want to worry about. It shows you everything it can show you. It shows you up to 10 different up to 10 different bars, as well as a lot of different extra things like your role, like your alerts, like your encounter, vehicle, extra, we'll talk about it in a second. But these bars, if I don't need them, I know I don't have that many, that many extra abilities to just spread around the clutter up the space. I don't want it. You can just middle click on it and it turns gray like this, like the bar number nine. And that means that in the game, you will simply not find that bar anywhere. You will not be able to put any, any icons on it. So that's, uh, and I believe that it probably frees up a little bit of visual memory of your machine. I have not done any particular intricate tests, but as a person who worked in IT for many years, I kind of imagine that the less of stuff gets loaded into you into the UI into the visual memory of your machine of World of Warcraft, the better and the better is performance. So disable what you don't need. I, it's I think it's generally visual clutter hygiene. It just doesn't hit you as much as well as I think you helping performance of your computer. Now let's take a look at the at the other um, settings of the bars. So first of all, let's take a look. So we'll close this one, but you can see bar number one. Bar number one is something where your abilities are by default. 
So when, uh, when Domino's is installed, it basically, as you can see, if you t pay attention to the screen, the standard bars of World of Warcraft, standard, standard action bars are nowhere to be found, those bulky gray ones. Well, it has transformed those bars into these neat little things, right? So bar number one is your bar number one, is something that is default where your base abilities always get displayed. If a druid changes its form, then this bar number one changes into something that will display your form, your form abilities from, say, Feral to Moonkin to something else. It will change it dynamically. I might actually reload. Right now I'm on my uh, Shaman because at the moment, spoiler alert, I enjoy sh playing Shaman. It's just kind of, just can't get rid of this feeling that I'm really, really enjoying it. Can't drop it um, as an alto-holic. But on a Druid, it's very interesting. So the way I arrange it is I like my main bar with my main abilities. I like to limit the number of abilities that I show to myself. I think that I can work with 12. So I fill up all 12. I did not change, as you can see in the bar one settings, I did not change the size but I changed the columns to six because I like it all a little bit more centered and a little bit more in front of me. And as you can see, you can move the bars anyway, if that was not obvious from what I was showing you so far. You can increase size or decrease size of the, uh, of the, of the icons and of the bars. So scale, you go to scale, you can see that mine is already a little bit increased. I like it a little bit bigger on the screen, but if you, I don't know, would like it even more in your face. Or if you would like it less in your face. See the slider, what it does? It changes the size of these things and it allows you to very freely configure what you want. And needless to say, it's applicable to all of the bars that I'm showing you. You can make them as tiny, as big, as short, as long, however you want. Here, for example, I shoved my food, my, uh, my other kind of um, secondary, very not even secondary, tertiary, uh, actions and other things to the far end with verticals, with vertical layout. So the size of these bars is still 12, but the columns, uh, uh, the setting of the columns is set to one. So they are these skinny little things. Yeah. I think enough is said because this is pretty obvious. You will just play with this and you will see. Only one thing that is yet to point out here, and that's purely a matter of taste or whether you want to even be bothered with this. You just, uh, you can set up faded opacity of the, or how transparent the bar is. So opacity is 100, 100%. It means that the bar will be fully visible when it's active or when the mouse is over it. For my main bar, I would like it always visible. So 100% of faded and 100% for normal opacity. But for these very tertiary, very secondary bars, as you can see, opacity when the mouse is over it, when it's active, is 100%. But when I don't need it, it fades into the background to 30%. Take a look at this. So if I exit configuration right now, see how they are practically misty or, di or disappeared. But when the mouse is over them, see how they are highlighted almost like this? That's what Domino's allows you to do. Is it a super duper important feature? No. But none of this is super duper important. All of that is a matter of taste. And all of that is a matter of visual clutter. But see how everything is just sometimes go suddenly gone and all that that's in my face is what I really, really need. And a lot of people, they configure their things very differently. Uh, Domino's is smart. Domino's locks, um, locks the positioning of the skills and abilities in place during combat. You cannot change the bars. You cannot enter configuration mode or exit configuration mode for, for the, for the, you know, uh, for that matter, during combat. So make sure you don't get caught with your bars being configured when you enter combat. Because abilities will still work, but the bars won't. And it will be like this. You will not be able to exit it if the combat starts. But not many people configure their bars during combat, I have to say. Um, what else is there to say? So if, you, if I click on this, if I click on this, well, of course, I'm mounted and of course there is no target. It will try to execute the ability. If I hold shift, if I, if I hold shift and drag, then it allows me to drag the ability somewhere else, yes? Because I'm not in combat, Domino's hasn't locked it. And as you can see, the bars that I have not disabled with the middle mouse click, they are, some, they are suddenly visible over here. I deliberately left this guy here visible for you to show that I can actually move, move this rock biter weapon right now into that position. 
like a madman, as if anyone would want it there. Yeah, but that's a separate question. So as I explained to you, these are gray, they're disabled, we're not using it. Let's be good housekeepers and let's just learn how to manage our UI better and let's disable these guys well. Now if I disable it, it's all nice and neat and all nice and tidy, just how I like it. So that's pretty much as much as you need to know about Domino's. Domino's offers you, aside from key action bars where stuff goes on, they offer you, uh, Domino's offers you some additional things that are standard things, like your role, that's where random roles will be going, your alerts, additional alerts, any buttons specific to the encounter. So for example, something like in Horrific Visions, you would see the uh, sanity bar over here. Is this the best place for sanity bar? No, it's absolutely not. And on some of my main characters that I run horrific visions with, like my demon hunter, you will see that I have encounter over here because I want to see my I want to see my sanity over here. And I probably once I start pushing horrific visions with this guy, that's what you probably notice on my UI. I'll probably do that. Vehicle is that thing that evacuates you. It's like that red arrow that gets you off off the flying. Um, uh, for example, if you, I don't know, if you're riding a vehicle in winter grasp and you want to exit, or if you're flying a taxi to a flight point and you say, drop me off at the next one, that's where you exit, things like that. Extra uh, extra buttons, activate something during a raid encounter, that's what it is. Pet is pet, cast is standard cast bar, and all of that is just right there for you. Uh, separately, uh, Domino separates the experience bar that by the click on click middle click i think if i'm not mistaken no not here not in configuration mode on click in the normal mode middle click middle mouse click it switches between reputation honor experience i don't i don't know if that's a standard ability of a normal bar or if that's actually dominoes because i've had dominoes for so long right now guys it's very hard for me to even remember what's standard what's not anymore but i love it I highly recommend it to you. Um, what else is there on my UI? As you can see, I'm a minimalist. I use elements of the standard UI. I have the standard chat window. I, I put it, I minimize it a bit and move it to the corner. I have a recount meter. I know that there is also SCADA and a lot of people like SCADA for damage meter, but I'm an old school guy. I use recount for that. Recount is just here a little window to remind me how well I'm doing and how well my, my group is doing. I also, when I'm in healing spec, as you can see in the resto guide that you're welcome to take a look at that I published not long ago, I was talking a little bit about grid add-on that shows you your whole raid or shows you your whole group in case you need to heal them. At the moment, I'm in enhancement spec, so it's just to the side here. I couldn't be bothered disabling it, so it's just there. This little lovely thing here has been here also for years. It, these are just the, my current coordinates, and that's the most infamous a don known as Tom Tom. Tom Tom tells you where you are in the world. Uh, I believe maybe on the big on maybe on the big map. Yeah, cursor. It tells you it tells you where your cursor is in the top right corner of the screen. It tells you where the coordinate is, and player is in top left corner here. I believe that they actually I don't know if Blizzard bought this add on or if they developed similar functionality themselves, but I believe that Tom Tom add on is actually included because it's a tiny little thing, but it's super helpful. It's included, I think, in the standard UI of Shadowlands, I heard, yeah? As you can see here, I have just a standard menu from World of Warcraft. I didn't change anything, Domino's didn't change it for me. It is a Domino's configurable bar and known as menu, but it's, uh, it's just here, I have it here to the side always. And that's about it, that's about all there is to say. I'm not using any other augmentations, as you can see, I'm using standard, standard, um, what is it called, uh, portrait of my character and selection of my character just to tell me, to remind me that I'm healthy and mana, mana is not an issue unless you're playing arcane spec of the mage. Sometimes when I play ranged classes, I put these things a little higher because when you are ranged, imagine this, when you're playing, the target is a little bit further away from you. So target, especially if you're in a raid or in a group, so you're standing back and you're casting, but your group is a little bit ahead. So in order to keep your picture and the picture of your target a little bit in front of you, so visible to you in your field of view, it would make sense to have them a bit higher. For enhancement, which is melee, I found that 
it's not a big issue for me. I kind of keep them here nice and neat and then I lock the frames to make sure that they're here out of the way. And that's it. Very minimalist, very nice, clean UI. I stand by it. It's It's been with me for many, many years and it's been okay. Now, very quick practical example of how you would use weak auras. Weak auras is the also a very famous add-on that I referred to in some previous guides, um, class guides and whatever restoration guide. Weak auras, this is not an extensive weak auras guide. I spent more time on dominoes and I'm not going to spend the same amount of time on weak auras, but I'm going to give you a practical example. Weak auras is something that allows you to create visual signals on the screen for yourself in the form of progress bars or icons or numbers or words or texts when you would like to be made aware of something. For example, how much of a debuff remains on the enemy or how much of a buff remains on you or whether or not currently, as you saw, for example, in the videos where I run horrific visions, I made a weak aura which shows a big fat icon when um, I've procced Gift of the Titans, which prevents the sanity from being drained. It's very important for me. I know that when it's on, I can take some extra risks and pull some extra mobs and stuff like that. So it's really, really, really helpful. And the users are numerous. You just need to come up with, you just need to think of the situations when you, when you might want to be made aware of something. The game needs to show you something and put it right in your face. And Dominoes is not going to do it. Standard UI is not going to do it. Weak auras is going to do it. I'm going to give you an example. Example is for uh, like if I would like to track a buff of my flame tongue weapon. Flame tongue weapon. Well, this is a very trivial example, but you can then extrapolate and work with it. Yeah. Weak auras downloaded from Curse Forge. Same story as with as with Dominoes. Yeah. So it's installed somewhere there. It's currently invisible. My goal is to make sure that I know when I've buffed myself with Flame Tongue and I don't need to push this button anymore and I can focus on my target and I can focus on other things. That is our scenario. That is our goal. So I type slash WA weak auras. That enters weak auras configuration mode. As you can see, currently I have only one very simple aura set up for that um, for that icon I was telling you about, the Gift of the Titans tracking for horrific visions. Obviously, it's not for this character, it's for another one. It doesn't matter. We chorus will know when to load it and for which character. Now we're going to create a new one for Flame Tongue. Very simple. So we can work with advanced, but this is not an advanced guide, and you're welcome to try to test, to download some new We Chorus uh, from other people you know, and um, uh, experiment with that. But we're just going to click simple. And I do. I would like progress bar because I'd like to see duration of that buff on me available. Progress bar. I'd like a horizontal bar. It's a buff. And what buff? It knows what buffs are applicable to the current class. It's a very smart, nice add-on. So I pick flame tongue. And it shows me when would you would I like to show it when buffed always show, yeah, I would like on leave buffed. That's about it. I can rename it, but I can't be bothered. Uh, now, what are we? What is the trigger of it? What is it observing when it's looking for that buff or debuff or whatever? We go to trigger tab. Luckily, it's smart enough to understand that flame tongue buff is actually on the player, so it's already configured here in the unit. It's configured player. But similarly, yeah, it's pretty simple. If you are, if you want to track something that perhaps flame shock, if you shot, if you're an elemental shaman and you shot an enemy with a flame shock, and you'd like to track amount of uh, the num this, the time remaining on a debuff, so you would be picking debuff, and here in the unit you'd be selecting target instead of player. But in this case, it's just player. It's as trivial as that. Now this configuration window is, is draggable and you can see that auras are now in the in the configuration mode and there are nice little extra lines appearing on the screen that allow you to align it perfectly for those OCD people like me who would like everything precise. Not to say that the rest of my UI is precise, but it's pretty symmetrical, you have to agree. So I would put it here, for example, at the top. See these little, uh, as I mouse over, these little corners and everything highlights. So all of these bars are configurable. They can be thick or they can be really thin. It's really beautiful in terms of what you can do. 
Well, I'm just gonna do basic neat configuration. Here it nice aligns with my with my main bar and that's about it. And I'm just gonna close the Wicora. And it disappeared because currently I'm not buffed. Let's pick a target and we will see what happens. Let's pick this dude. Boom, nothing. Flame tongue. Boom. And you can see that I'm buffed with flame tongue. It shows me very very easily how long it remains on it. I don't need to worry about anything else. And it just allows me to very nicely go about my business and get rid of them and prioritize Storm Strike and whatever else, Lava Lash, until the buff disappears. I hope this made sense, guys. This was supposed to be very, very quick, easy demonstration. I hope you know enough now about Domino's add-on, which is basically bread and butter of any UI of my any alt. I configure them slightly differently, but generally this is how my UI is laid out. Please leave a comment down below. Tell me about what add-ons you use. I know Elf UI is very, very popular. I know not everyone uses Domino's. I'm a huge, huge fan of Domino's because of how minimalistic it is. That's why I'm really recommending it to you guys. And welcome your feedback, welcome your suggestions, uh, questions, content requests. If you're particularly interested in a specific add-on that I may be aware of or I may use, would be more than happy to answer questions. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We are a friendly little club of altoholics, horrific vision runners and people who are waiting for Shadowlands. Appreciate you stopping by and talk to you very soon.